This video goes along with chapter 17. It's still on section 17.2, and we are going to look at how do buffers work. So what we've got here is we have the weak acid hydrogen fluoride, and I'm going to write this um, without water being present. So we are going to have hydrogen ions and fluoride ions. Okay, so we do, um, in this situation, we've got a buffer because we have our weak acid and then we also have our conjugate base. So we have our weak acid and our salt. So the solution is a buffer. Now, what has happened is that to this buffer, we have added, um, we're going to start with a strong base. So the strong base we are adding is hydroxide. Um, doesn't matter what hydroxide that is, but we are adding that to this equilibrium. Um, and so what happens is the weak acid, HF, is going to react with hydroxide. Now, because we have a strong base, that's going to drive the equilibrium to, or the reaction to the right. Uh, this is an acid, so it will donate a proton to hydroxide, giving us water and the fluoride ion. Okay, so that's what you're seeing um, right here. So after um, this was initial, where we had equal amounts of our weak acid and our conjugate base. And then after the addition of the hydroxide, we went this way, where we had um, the hydroxide ion reacting with HF. So what happened was our concentration of HF decreased um, because these two were reacting together. And that caused um, an increase in the production of fluoride ion. Okay, so now let's look at the opposite. So let's get rid of this. Okay, so now let's say to this equilibrium, we are going to add strong acid. So we're gonna add H plus. Okay, um, the strong acid is not going to react with a weak acid. It's not going to react with H+, but you need to remember that this is an acid, HF is an acid, and F- is a conjugate base. This conjugate base is a stronger base than water, so the hydrogen ion from the strong acid is going to react with that. I think that's what is on this next slide. Yeah. So what's actually happening here is the strong acid is going to react with that conjugate base, which will then produce the weak acid HF. So now we're going this way. We had equal amounts of both. We added strong acid. The strong acid reacts with the conjugate base that's present in the buffer. And then um, concentration of HF increases. Concentration of F minus decreases. If we had written this as hydronium, I just want to show you what this would look like. Um, instead of just getting, sorry, my pen is having issues. HF, we would also get water. So that's what this is talking about down at the bottom of the slide. Okay, so to summarize what we just talked about, if we add strong base, um, it is going to react with the weak acid. So you've really got to know your strong acids and weak acids, strong bases and weak bases now. If we add strong acid, it is going to react with 
the weak base. Now this can also be um, our conjugate base. So here, this could be our conjugate acid. Okay, so let's look at this first one. What happens when sodium hydroxide is added to a buffer composed of, this is acetic acid and acetate. So sodium hydroxide is strong base, and that is acid, added to an acid, um, I'm sorry, a buffer that's composed of acetic acid and acetate. So really what we have here is acetic acid, the acetate ion, and a proton. Whoa, sorry. Ah. All right, sorry about that. So this is what we've got. So the sodium hydroxide is our strong base. It's going to react with the weak acid or a conjugate acid. Well, here's our weak acid. And I know that because the COOH is a carboxyl group, so that this is an organic acid. Um, so really what's happening is we have our acetic acid plus or hydroxide. The base is going to accept a proton, become water, and then we are left with the acetate ion. So this is the reaction that occurs. So what happens is our concentration of weak acid decreases and our concentration of acetate ion increases. Okay, so now we're looking at another situation where HCl is added to the same buffer that I had written in black here. So HCl is our strong acid. Um, it's, it's the hickle of hyperhickle high. So strong acids are going to react with the weak base or the conjugate base. So if I look at our buffer that's composed of acetic acid and acetate, acetic acid is our weak acid. Acetate is our conjugate base, so what will happen is the strong acid, HCl, is going to react with the conjugate base, and we will form acetic acid. So what happens is our concentration of acetate decreases, our concentration of acetic acid increases. Okay, so how a buffer really works is that the um, buffer, one of the components of the buffer itself, either the weak acid or the conjugate base, and both of them are weak, are going to react with either the strong base or strong acid, which are added, um, to maintain pH. So they prevent the addition of these strong acids or strong bases from changing pH. Okay, so let's look at this mathematically. Um, let's think about the equilibrium constant expression for the dissociation of just some random um, weak acid, HA. So if we combine that with water, we will get hydronium because the proton will um, be attracted to the water. So we get hydronium and then we get A minus the anion. If we're going to write the expression for that, that would be Ka equals the concentration of our products divided by the concentration of our reactants. Now, if that doesn't make sense what I'm doing there. Consider our weak acid being like nitrous acid, and we are combining that with water. So we will get the hydronium ion, and we will get the nitrite ion. So instead of A minus here, we would have, we'd still have hydronium ion, 
but our A minus is really our anion, so that would be nitrite, and then HA is our weak acid. So it's really the same thing that we've been doing. It's just this applies to everything. Okay, so we don't need this anymore. Sorry. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take this expression and I want to rearrange it a little bit. So I am going to write hydronium ion concentration. I want to isolate, isolate this, get it by itself. So I'm really going to um, multiply both sides by the reciprocal or the inverse. So multiply this side by the weak acid concentration divided by the conjugate base or anion concentration. So I will end up with Ka times the concentration of the weak acid divided by the concentration of the anion. Okay, so focusing on this that I wrote right here. Hydrogen ion concentration and pH, because pH depends on hydrogen ion concentration, is going to be determined by two things. The first thing is by the Ka of your weak acid. And then the second thing is going to be this ratio right here between the concentration of the weak acid and the conjugate base. So that written in words is that your hydrogen ion concentration and thus your pH depend on two factors, Ka or Kb, and then that ratio of concentrations of your conjugate acid base pair. Okay, so I want to keep going. Um, if we rearrange what I previously wrote, going to solve now for, um, go back to Ka. So all we've done here is just kind of moved hydronium ion concentration out to the side. And then we're going to take the negative log of both sides. So when we do that, um, we'll get the negative log of Ka. Um, because these are multiplied, we can add, whoops, where'd my purple go? I doesn't want to write. Right there. Okay, and so we'll have the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration and then also the negative log of this ratio. Okay, um, when we learned, kind of ignore this stuff down here for a minute because I'm going to explain it. Um, we learned that pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration. And we talked briefly in class, just mentioned it, that that P actually means negative log. So this negative log here, I'm replacing with P. So this term is called PKA. Just like this term, sorry. go back to where I was. All right, here we go. Okay, sorry you had to sit through all that. So this term right here is called PKA. And this term, which you're already familiar with, is called pH. Now this ratio here is the same thing as this ratio. And if we had a weak acid in equilibrium with the proton and the anion, um, this is really just our expression. So HA is our acid and A minus is our conjugate 
base. So this is a new equation. Okay. I don't know why that's so dim. Okay. So here we've got pKa equals pH minus the negative log of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. Um, I would not use it this way. Wait. I apologize. I'm trying to think of which way it's yes. Okay. Written on your equation sheet. All right. Sorry you had to listen to me. Um, fumbling through all of that, but I wanted to make sure it was right. So then rearranged, what we're doing is really um, moving pKa, we're switching places pKa and pH, and so we get pH equals pKa plus the log of the conjugate base concentration over the concentration of the acid. And this equation is called the henderson hasselbach equation. It is on your equation sheet. Now that same problem that we did before, we can use this equation to calculate. So I want to go back and show you how to do that. And then this video will be done. Okay, so this is the problem that we did before. And I want to go back and look at this. I'm going to erase all this work that we did here. I want to leave our answer because we need to know what that is. Okay, so we are going to go back and solve this problem. Okay, more than likely what you're going to be doing is you'll just kind of set up an ice chart and then like before, you'll go ahead and you'll substitute in the given. Okay, it's at this point when you realize that you have a concentration of your acid and a concentration of your conjugate base that you realize, hey, I can do henderson hasselbach You don't have to, um, but you can. So pH, this is henderson hasselbach equals pKa plus the log of the conjugate base concentration divided by the acid concentration. That's the equation that you're using. So I'm going to say pH equals, now pKa is negative log of your Ka. So my Ka is up here. 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. That is plus the log of my conjugate base concentration, 0 0.10, divided by the concentration of my acid, 0 0.12. And then all I'm going to do is solve. Okay, so I've got negative log of 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Um, this, when I solved for it, let's see, pH equals 3.854 plus, if I do the log of 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.12, I get negative 0 0.079. You don't have to show all this work. I'm just doing it because I want you to see it. So if I have 3.854 um, plus a negative 0 0.079, I get 3.775. Um, still follow the same rules for sig figs, so 3.78. Um, they are really, really close. They're within a hundredth. Um, and you want to show your substitution either way. Um, you don't need to worry that you're going to get it wrong because you're off by a hundredth. Um, that's just a difference in rounding, so you don't need to worry about that. 